Welcome to the Hack the Entrepreneur Top 10, where we dive into the 10 most popular, deepest diving, and most transformative interviews from over 200 of the world's most interesting and brightest entrepreneurs. To get the full experience and to hear new episodes every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, visit hackthentrepreneur.com. Welcome to Hack the Entrepreneur, the show which reveals the fears, habits, and inner battles behind big name entrepreneurs and those on their way to joining them. Now, here is your host, John Naster. Yes, this is Hack the Entrepreneur, and I want to thank you so much for joining me. I think we're going to have a lot of fun today. I am your host, John Naster, but you can call me Johnny. Today's guest is not only a smart entrepreneur, she is also part designer, part business strategist, and part coach. A few years ago, she would have told you that she wasn't an entrepreneur, but this has changed. She now runs her own successful business and helps other lady entrepreneurs gain the clarity and confidence they need to connect with their ideal clients, build their brand, business online, and look good doing it. Last year, we had the pleasure of meeting at Chris Tucker's Tropical Think Tank, and I was blown away by her marketing strategies, which she says is her superpower, and her truly beautiful web design work that has been the foundation of her business for years. Now, let's hack Jessica Ray. FreshBooks makes dead simple cloud accounting software that's transformed how 5 million entrepreneurs deal with their day to day paperwork. As the exclusive sponsor of Hack the Entrepreneur's Top 10, FreshBooks is sharing their top 10 tips on how entrepreneurs like you can reduce stress, make their businesses run more smoothly. Tip number nine, automate your billing workflow. To help you save time and get paid faster, FreshBooks can send recurring invoices automatically on your behalf. You can also avoid awkward conversations with clients who don't pay on time by letting FreshBooks send automated late payment reminders and calculate late payment fees. This is just a fraction of what FreshBooks can do for you. Get 30 days free to feel the full effect of FreshBooks on you and your small business. Go to freshbooks.com slash hack and enter hack in the how did you hear about us section. Welcome back to Hack the Entrepreneur. We have another amazing guest, Jessica. Thank you for joining me. I am so glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. It's absolutely my pleasure. Okay, let's jump straight into this. Jessica, as an entrepreneur, what is the one thing that you do that you feel has been the biggest contributor to your success so far? I think that there are a couple of things that I do. In my business as a graphic designer, I think one of the things that has made me really successful is that I am able to speak to my clients on their level. And the reason that that is, is because I was never formally trained. You know, I didn't go to college to be a graphic designer. So I was never really schooled in the proper, you know, terms and everything that, you know, quote unquote, industry jargon. So I don't use that lingo when talking to my clients. So I think that, and they, and they don't care really, truly, they don't care what the proper names are for things. They just, we they don't, just, we don't, they don't, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> And so they just, they want to know that we're talking about the same thing. And so I think that that's been one thing that's been really successful is that I'm a really good listener and I'm really able to get out of people what it is that they are really wanting to accomplish, not just in their design, but in their business and come up with a solution that's really going to help them. And I think that that's one thing that really sets me apart as a designer and as an entrepreneur. That's cool. And it's served me well. Yeah, that's really cool because you're probably... Absolutely right. I know I work with, and I've only worked with him for about a year. This is my buddy Nick does WordPress development. And it took me about a month to figure out why he was so good to work with. Uh-huh. And then I realized that he's not like every other coder I've ever dealt with, where there's all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm so lost to what he's even talking <laughs> about. But Nick is just like, no, he's got to do this, this, this. And then I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Right. And when I would come to him with an issue, he was just like, yeah, totally. Let's do that. And that makes sense. Or that doesn't make sense. So that's cool. And did you, like, were you aware of this when you did it? Or was this like, why am like, why is everything kind of, why do my customers like me so much? My clients are so happy. And then you kind of 
or was it brought to your attention? You know, I think early on in my career, it was a huge source of insecurity for me. Like, I really thought that I, you know, who am I to be calling myself a graphic designer when I don't even know, you know, what these things are. But really, you know, my clients would come to me and just be like, this is amazing. I'm so happy. I'm so pleased. And I think my, you know, my early on, my customers had a lot more confidence in my ability than I did. And I thought, oh my gosh, I need to go back to school. I need to learn this. I need to read books. I need, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, I just need to, you know, do something to make myself legitimate here. And, you know, as you grow up and as you progress in your business and, you know, in life, you start to learn that these insecurities that you have aren't actually insecurities, that they are, you know, actually assets. And so it, it became, you know, it went from being an insecurity to being a real strength, I think. And I think it was just a process of, you know, of, of viewing it differently. Like I couldn't keep beating myself up about it, if that makes sense. It totally does. And I, I love it. I love turning the insecurity into a strength because, I mean, <laughs> if you want to talk insecurities, I've been <laughs> like a podcaster for like six months and the things that are happening with it, I feel like, wow, that's shocking. Like, People are like, wow, you know so much about podcasting. It's like, dude, I've been doing this for six months. Like, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I get where that coming from. And I'm sure, especially not going to school for graphic design, that it probably would affect you. But it seems like you really got a cool grasp on it. I like it. I like the way you deal with it mentally. Thanks. Yeah. And, you know, I just do what I do, you know, and it's either, people either like it or they don't. And I think, you know, it doesn't that concept of I just do what I do doesn't just apply to design and it applies to every entrepreneur. You know, you, you have your own path, you have, you know, the way that you do things and certain people are going to like it and other people aren't. And, you know, when people don't like it, then it's actually, you know, it's, it's hard to take, but it's actually a really good sign because it means that you're narrowing in and, you know, if you're, if you're turning people off, it means that you're doing something right, you know? Exactly. And that's a hard thing to realize, but it's absolutely true. And I mean, just going to your site, you can tell that you have some sort of innate knack for an eye for design. It's cool. It's really, really, really good. Thank you. And I really like it. So I know by going to your site and there's this headline that says I was not born an entrepreneur. So this question is, there seems to be a time in every entrepreneur's life or just when they realize the one of two things, either they have a calling to make something bigger than themselves, or they simply can't work for somebody else. Can you tell me which one of these two you are, Jessica? Yeah, for me, it was just this realization that I was, you know, in this job that I was never going to be able to make the impact that I wanted to make. So I was in an interesting position where the job and the career that I left, I actually really liked the people that I was working for. And it was actually a pretty good gig. I just felt kind of trapped and sort of like I was, I was never, you know, like, you know, you hit that ceiling where it's like, you're just, you're never going to be able to do what you want to do. And so for me, it was like going out on my own was really going to, allow me to grow and to really discover how, you know, I, I know all of the abilities, like be the best me that I could, you know, mm -hmm. I guess if, that's not a very eloquent way of saying it, but it was just, I really realized that the only way for me to get the opportunities that I wanted to have was to create them for myself. Nice. And I think you said this was two years ago. Yeah. Not that long ago. Wow. Can you, so can you, it hasn't been that long, two years. Can you think back to and maybe like tell me about just the feeling of walking out of your job that very last day, knowing that you do not have a paycheck next week, you don't have anybody making the decisions for you. It's all on you. Yeah, <laughs> was, I think everybody remembers the day that they quit their <laughs> job. Right? They do. And mine was actually it was a little weird the way that it all happened because my, you know, my the company that I was working for didn't. I don't think he really wanted me to leave. And so he kind of said, okay, well, why don't, you know, why don't you take a quote unquote leave of absence and we'll, you know, we visit this. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so I did, I went on a leave of absence. And so what it was is I wasn't technically quitting. I wasn't leaving my job. And so I didn't get to say goodbye to anybody that I worked with. I didn't get to say goodbye to any of the clients that I worked with. And it was like, it was very weird to see people around town because I live in a fairly small town and be like, oh, you're not working there anymore. And I was like, I was like, no, I'm not. Here's the, you know, here's the story. Here's what I'm doing now. But I think it was this very quiet exit that happened. And so I sort of got home and I wanted to celebrate and I wanted to like, you know, 
I wanted to like high five and drink champagne or something, but, <laughs> but there was nobody around. Like literally everybody else that I, that I knew was not an entrepreneur. So it wasn't like I could call people up and be like, take the afternoon off. Let's go celebrate, you know? And so that was, I think it was also like, it was very lonely at the same time. So it was like, I was feeling like this huge range of emotions because I was super excited, but also like this realization that I am now going this completely alone, which set in really quickly. So that was my moment. It does. Like almost the next day when you wake up and you're just at a coffee shop working yourself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And that's why it's been so important, I think, to have connections with other entrepreneurs and, you know, masterminds and events and all that kind of thing where you, you connect with other people who are doing what you're doing with what you're doing, you know? Yeah, I think it's super important. I mean, I met you at a conference, a conference that I talk about way too much, but, um, <laughs> the one in the Philippines, because it kind of changed my life. Just the people I met there and the people I stay in touch with still. But did you, how long did it take you after you left your job that you came to the realization that you really did have to surround yourself, even virtually, with people that are into entrepreneurship and are into becoming a better version of themselves? Gosh. Okay. So I left my job and I think it was like a couple of months before I actually, well, I went to world domination summit before I ever even quit my job. So, and I took time off from my job to go to that conference. And that was where I met just a ton of people in the industry who just got knock on wood. It was complete dumb luck meeting all of them (laughs) um, because I didn't actually meet them at the conference. I met them before the conference in this, you know, in that town, but I, that really ended up setting the stage for everything. And, and that really gave me the bug for going to events and connecting in person with all these people that, you know, are sort of doing their thing online. So it was before I even quit my job that I really got into that. But and then it was like, you know, NMX and TTT and all these, you know, I'm going to traffic and conversion in a couple of weeks. So nice. Yeah, it's all those, all those events. And you just, yeah, so you got the bug early. And it took me a while, but now that I've got it, it really makes sense to keep going to them because they're amazing and they really, really, really do help. So now away from traveling to conferences and stuff, let's get to work because you have full-time clients and you do business mentoring as well and you do graphic design. Plus, I follow you on a lot of social media and you spend a lot of time at the beach with your dog. (laughs) Which is awesome, like truly awesome, but you figured something out to be productive in the way that you need to. So with work, today was a work day. Mm -hmm. Can you say, walk us through the first 30 minutes of your day, how you kind of, what you do, your routine to set yourself up to kind of do what you need to do and then get to go to the beach. You said already that you were at the beach today. I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I, almost every day. Uh, either that or the dog park. And that sort of is part of my morning, my morning routine. So every night, the night before is actually when my day starts. So I actually, I keep my to-do list in Evernote. And so I look through Evernote and I decide like, what is the one thing, the most important thing that I have to get done tomorrow? And I put that at the top of the list. And then I have, you know, two or three other things that need to get done that next day. And I put those on my to do tomorrow list. And so that really sets me up for being really productive the next morning. I don't need to think about it as I'm waking up and, you know, being groggy and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then the first thing I usually do, which I try not to, I'm trying to break myself of this habit, is grab my phone <laughs> and check, <laughs> check my email and my social media. And I go to my email list and see how many people signed up. <laughs> None of us All do those this. You're the only one. Your ego in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. So I do that. And then I get up and I meditate. Really? Nice. And after I'm done with that. How long have you been meditating? Um, gosh, a while, months, months, six, six to eight months. And I, you know, I was doing it really inconsistently and now I've been doing it really consistently and it, it's a huge help. I love it. Was there something you figured out to get it to be consistent rather than inconsistent? I scheduled it and I did it the first thing. Really? Nice. Yeah. I just get up and I do it. And I have, I actually, I love guided meditations and I'm absolutely a huge fan of Deepak uh, Chopra. And so I have his, a couple of his guided meditation series on my phone and I just turn one on. They're all about 20 minutes. And so I do a little bit of like yoga and stretching while like he and Oprah are talking. And then I actually get into the actual meditation of it. Wow. The sitting in silence part. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and then I, I get up and I, I write for 30 minutes, commit to writing some of that, my content generation keeps going. And then after I do my writing, 
I get up and I go for a walk with my dog, <laughs> usually on the beach. So that's why I see it every single day. Yeah. And it, Cause it's scheduled. It is. It's scheduled. And it, well, and he has to go, you know, <laughs> he does. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough that I make my own schedule that I can go. And it's one of those, it's one of those times a day where I, well, I listen to podcasts while I'm walking and I really, it's a time where I'm just, I'm so grateful for that time every single morning. So yeah, it's, it really sets me up. And when I get back, you know, it's breakfast and then jumping into whatever I have to do that day. Excellent. I love it. So at the beginning, you told us that you are really, really good at speaking to clients on their level. Jessica, can you now tell us something that you are really, really not good at? I am terrible at failing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm terrible at it. And because I'm a Virgo and I'm a perfectionist and I'm, I'm getting better and better at it. But one of my goals is to just fail better and faster every single time. Do you have a thought or a way that you're going to progress in this? It's so easy to say fail fast, fail forward, all this stuff, right? But it's all those, hard. all those buzzwords. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's so easy to say, but then all of a sudden the failure comes and it kind of just like wipes you out. And it's like, Oh my God, if, like, should I be doing this? Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? <laughs> Whatever that guy used to say. Yeah. On Saturday Night Live. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> do you have a plan for this? Like, do you, what's, how are you going to overcome it being, I don't know what Virgo has to do with it, honestly, but you, <laughs> <laughs> but you said it, so I'm assuming, I'm assuming it has something to do with it. Virgos are so, total perfectionists and I, oh. I definitely am. And it's that it's my meticulous nature that, that definitely serves me, but it also holds me back. So it's that thing of, I can't launch it until it's perfect or I can't, you know, writing and designs and everything. It's like, oh no, I can't let anybody see this until it's perfect. And so Quite honestly, one of the things that came for me out of going to Tropical Think Tank was really just having a bias for action and realizing that I had been consuming and learning and, you know, studying for a long, long time, but I hadn't actually been putting myself out there. And so that really got the ball rolling for me just starting to do my own thing and actually starting to, you know, hit the publish button and, and start doing things. And I had a really recent failure. And I say failure, but it was just, it was one of those things where I really, I had to pull the plug on something and really move in a different direction because I had planned this live event and deep down, it just wasn't the right thing. It wasn't the right timing. It, it just wasn't the right recipe for success. And so I pulled the plug on it and, you know, all this immediately, it's like, oh God, that's so embarrassing. Like I put this thing out there and now I'm not doing it. And, you know, you know what are people going to think of me that I, I don't follow through or that I don't, you know, that I, I'm not capable of doing this or whatever. It's all these fears that set in, right? And I was really set to just wallow in, you know, <laughs> in, my, in my sorrows all by myself with, with this failure. And it actually didn't happen. I just, <laughs> I felt such a sense of relief that I had, listen to myself and that I knew that I had this gut feeling, this inner wisdom that had been there all along. I just chose to start listening to that voice. And I think quite honestly, that's a lot of that. That is, you know, the meditation that I do every morning is it kind of helps you connect to that inner voice and listen to that voice instead of listening to that inner critic. And so I think for me, failing is all about awareness and realizing when you follow it, you, you know, what are you following? Are you following your ego? Are you letting your inner critic sort of guide you where you're going? Or are you following your inner wisdom? And the faster that you can realize that, the better off you are. And so that is kind of, you know, step one is awareness. What, you know, who am I following? What am I following? And then step two is like, just immediately putting it, you know, what do I need to do to put this failure to bed, right? Like, after a failure, there's certain things that, you know, you have to clean up the mess, right? And so like, what are the steps that I need to take to clean up this mess? And what do I need to do in order to go forward. And really, once you can kind of put it to bed, then you can sort of jump into the things that are going to make you, you know, successful in, in whatever it takes that failure's place, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. That's my, that's my plan. And it's interesting. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Cause, and it's interesting because you called that a failure, like canceling the live event and probably would have been a failure if you'd gone through with it and gone against the true, like what you actually felt about it, right? Yeah. And that's amazing. And that's super, super powerful to have that awareness beforehand. Um, and I'm sure it was super, super hard to do. I'm sure it was because I've done things similar, not 
like that exactly, but it's hard to do those things. It's hard to put yourself out there and then to have to pull back or change direction or something. Yeah. I think what's really hard for, you know, that it's like every entrepreneur goes through these stages in business, right? And I think it's really important to remember that when you start, it's really important to have these big grand visions of where you want your business to go, right? Ultimately what you want to do, because those are the kinds of things that push you and drive you and, you know, get you excited to keep doing what you're doing, you know? But at the same time that there's this, there's this gap, you know, there's this gap between what you know now and what you need to know in order to be successful at those big dreams or like, you know, especially if I, I experience this in design, like I want to create something. I, now that I do web design, which I've only been doing for a couple of years, whereas, you know, i I started out in print design, which I've been doing for, you know, over 15 years. So it's like, I wanted to create these things, but I didn't know how. And so there's this, you know, this gap between not, you know, like you want to create these beautiful things, but you don't know how. And I think that every entrepreneur doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're a designer or somebody else, like you go through that stage of like, you want to create this thing and you don't know how. So you just, you have to focus on, okay, well, what do I, you know, what's the next step in, in getting there? Like, who do I need to be? What do I need to become? What do I need to learn in order to get there? So I think that's the hard thing to realize. But once you realize that it's a lot, it's a lot easier to kind of be where you are instead of always kind of wishing you were at the end wishing you already had the success, wishing you were already as big as you want to be someday. Yeah. And it's interesting that you call it the gap because I just had a really, really interesting conversation with somebody earlier this week and he was talking about the entrepreneurial gap and it's kind of that thing of there's always where you want to be, but there's always where you are and you always really have to appreciate, like you say, like I guess the awareness of being where you are and then also looking back like, Jessica, like look back on two years and where you've come to, because otherwise I think sometimes we get stuck always trying to look forward, always the next goal, the next big giant things and never actually stopping to just like, well, today, I mean, I can't believe I get to do what I get to do. Mm -hmm. Like Three years ago, I, this was a dream to me, right? But it's still now today I get stuck in, oh, I can't wait till like six months from now. It's gonna be amazing what I'm doing. Yeah. And when you're always trying to be in the future, you really rob yourself of being in the present. Like you really rob yourself of the experience of like the full, you know, gut wrenching experience that it is to be a, you know, budding entrepreneur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's like someday you're going to look back on this. And if you were just not present at all for this and not feeling any, anything that you're going through, gosh, like how, how, how tragic to not you know, to not have this, have had this experience because I've, as great, you know, as terrible as it is, it's so great at the same time. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yes. And to move even beyond entrepreneurship, just in life, right? Like to not like to just be so afraid of feeling the highs and the lows that make up life. Like I think it's wrong and it's something you really shouldn't do. You should really don't try and just distract yourself with your phone when you start to get upset about something or, you know what I mean? Like, I think it is, it's a big part of just being alive in a really full way is just really taking those things. And just, it's part of being human is like getting upset about things, like really, really, truly, like just knocked over by stuff and then really just elated by other things. Yeah. So it's true though in business, because I mean, to think that you can get into it and not get totally like it's never going to be a straight course it's going to be just things knocking you from all sides but to me it's not any different than life that's kind of how life is i mean everything's going great then all of a sudden something with health or somebody from someone around you just gets sideswiped and it's like oh my god everything was so great yeah <laughs> and you don't have control over it so just enjoy it i mean there's nothing else you can do <laughs> but it's the same with business right it's just how it is it is and you know, I think, I think sometimes, you know, entrepreneurs, we sort of, you know, we're sort of cult-like in the sense that we, you know, we want to hang out with one another and we want to network with one another and we want to, you know, we sort of have like all these idealistic ideas about things. And, and it's interesting to me because I think the one thing that, that brings that out or the one thing that we all have in common is the fact that entrepreneurship and when you're starting your own business, it challenges you in so many ways. Whatever weaknesses that you have, are going to come out through you building your business. And I think it's the same thing for like, you know, professional athletes or, or anybody who's trying to get to the top level of anything that they, in any pursuit that they have, you know, it's that, that pursuit of excellence that brings out all of these, you know, little, uh, you know, challenges or flaws that you have, and you have to overcome those issues in order to get to the next level. 
And so I think that, you know, it takes a certain personality type to be an entrepreneur, to want to go through that and to want to overcome those things. And so it's just, it's interesting that to me, that, yeah, that me, whole process, being in that process. Yeah, me too. And so that lets us finish off. We're talking about being present, but also having places you want to get to and being aware of where you've come so far. But that leaves us with, say, success and the future. It's fairly new into a new year. I don't know if you set goals based on your the start of the new year. Not everybody does. But Jessica, where do you, like, as an entrepreneur and just professionally, where do you, is there something you want to attain in the next six months or the next year that would make you be able to look back on it and be like, yeah, I did that. That was, that was awesome. I totally set out to do that. Yeah. My, my primary goal this year with my business is to kind of grow the community side. So I have, you know, I have this design services side of my businesses that is sort of clicking along, but I have this other side of my business, which is a dream of mine to really impact more people and to make, you know, to make a greater impact. So I'm really trying to grow my ladypreneur community and serve more people and whatever that looks like. And I would like to be able to create some products and programs for people that can't afford to work with me one-on-one. So that's really, that's what my next six months looks like is build, building that out. Ooh, I look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Okay. We have talked just in passing about your business and now this community you want to build. Can you specifically tell the listeners where they can go find out more about you? Sure. My website is jessicaray.me. That's J-E-S-S-I-C-A-R-E-A dot me. It's my website. I also have a Facebook group, The Ladypreneur Community. You can search that on Facebook and find me there too. Awesome. The Ladypreneur Community and Jessica Ray dot me. I will put links in the show notes for everyone. So they're super easy for you to go find out more about Jessica. I strongly suggest you do because she's up to some really awesome stuff. Jessica, thank you so much for just stopping by, taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to just watching you keep doing awesome things coming in the future. Thanks so much. That was great. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I have been looking forward to this since we met last year at, as I mentioned, the Tropical Think Tank. If you are listening and you haven't gone to any or a lot of conferences in the business space or the marketing or even in the market that you happen to be working in, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend it. I know that I mentioned Tropical Think Tank a lot on the show because it had such a massive impact on my life. And I've got, I found my mastermind out of it. They helped me create this show. I've had several guests on now that I've had the pleasure of speaking to because I met them there. And the whole podcast itself was created out of masterminding and brainstorming at the Tropical Think Tank and people way smarter than me telling me that I need to start a podcast and it happened. I'm not going back to Tropical Think Tank this year because it is in conflict with another conference. It happens to be at the same time. And that is the Rainmaker Authority Conference put on by Copyblogger, which is going to be in May in Denver, Colorado. And it is going to be just amazing. I'm looking so forward to it. Amazing speakers, amazing people. And I didn't make it to the inaugural one last year, but I am looking forward to it so much this year. And if you can make it there, I would love to buy you a coffee and hang out and just talk to you and see what you're up to. So you should check it out if you get a chance and you are looking for a conference to attend this year. I strongly recommend it. It is hacktheentrepreneur.com slash authority. And you will be able to find all the details there and see if it is a good fit for you. So Jessica said a lot of cool things. She said a lot of smart things. But she said one thing, didn't she? Did you get it? Did you hear it? Let's do it. Let's find the hack. Early on, my customers had a lot more confidence in my ability than I did. And I thought, oh my gosh, I need to go back to school. I need to learn this. I need to read books. I need, you know, I thought, oh my gosh, I just need to, you know, do something to make myself legitimate here. And you know, as you grow up and as you progress in your business and 
you know, in life, you start to learn that these insecurities that you have aren't actually insecurities, that they are, you know, actually assets. And that's the hack. Jessica, beautifully said. Thank you so much for being so candid with that and I guess admitting how you felt initially going into business because it's something that we all struggle with. It's been called imposter syndrome or whatever you want, but it's the feeling that maybe we don't have anything to give. Maybe who am I to be telling somebody how to run their business? Who am I to be telling somebody how to create an ad on Facebook? Who am I to tell somebody how to create a podcast? When you kind of forget what you've done, you kind of forget the steps you've taken to get where you are and the thought you've put into it and the hard work you've put into it and the mistakes that you've made and learned from. And I know that it's something that all of us struggle with. I think we struggle with it even as Jessica says that she's gotten over it and now she uses it as a strength. I'm sure it still comes there once in a while. I'm sure it still comes into play. It does for me, it does for a lot of people, but it's part of the game. It's part of what we have to do. And we do have to step up and know that, and know the stuff that we know, know that we do have absolute true value to share with the world and to give and to help others to become better people and run better businesses or to do whatever it is that you want to help people do. And we have to step up and we have to admit it to ourselves because our customers aren't always going to prop us up the way Jessica's did. And that's awesome that they did. And it's hard. It is hard. But I just I thank you, Jessica, for that, because you said it beautifully. And I just I really think that it is of true value to understand and to prepare for it, because that is coming in your journey through entrepreneurship. Trust me, it is coming. And you it kind of sideswipes you and it kind of makes it hard at times, but you got to just work through it, uh, go around it, go over it, do whatever it is you have to do. So thank you, Jessica. And just thank you so much for everything again. So that's it, guys. That has been a lot of fun. Hacktheentrepreneur.com is the website. It is brand new and it's awesome. And I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> you should go check it out. And you'll see my face at the top with an email place to put your email right beside it on the left. Drop your email, please. I would love to be able to reach out to you every Sunday afternoon and just give you some of the best writing that I'm doing right now. I'm really enjoying it and I'm getting a lot of great feedback for it. So please drop your email in there and we will be in contact. You can hit reply to any email, including the welcome one. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me what you need help with. Tell me what you're struggling with. I will help you in any way that I possibly can. And I would love to hear from you. This has been a lot of fun and I truly thank you for spending the time with me today. It does, it does, it does mean a lot to me that you do that and I thank you truly. Until next time, please keep hacking the entrepreneur. Uh -huh.